Hey gang, today we are going to do Eric Clapton's turnaround lick that he used in Cream's Crossroads. It's the Chuck Berry lick to end all Chuck Berry licks. You know, it's this one right here. That one right there. We're gonna throw in the intro to Crossroads as well in this lesson. All right, so anyway, if you like this one, please give it the thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel for a couple of these every week. Don't forget to leave your comments below for things you'd like me to do in the future. All right, we'll see you in just a second with the uh, lesson. Right, gang let's go over this one now we're not gonna do tab I think it's good to do it without the tab for this one I can hear the screaming and the yelling and the gnashing of the teeth and all the rest <laughs> you can put it in the comments but seriously it's good for you to do this one without the tab so we're gonna start out by doing the lick itself now the lick is over the turnaround which is the last part where it goes from the E back to the A chord right or it's the last couple chords there then we'll do the um, whole intro. So here's what the lick is. That's the lick itself. Now I'm going to play it a little bit slower, a lot slower, and then we'll break it down. But you can definitely hear the resemblance to the Chuck Berry lick. But it's a little bit more sophisticated in handling that turnaround. It's a very signature sort of lick that Clapton would do to go to the, the root note from here and then drop an octave and hit the root note again on that E. Just to do that. Okay, here we go. Here it is nice and slowly. And give that last note some nice vibrato. Okay, let's get the notes mechanically down and then we'll talk a little bit about, you know, maybe playing it with a little bit of flair. I can't play it exactly like Clapton did. He was awesome at it, but I'll try and show you what I know anyway. Okay, so we're gonna bar here on the fifth fret on the first three strings. And on the G string, we're gonna hammer from five to six. That's how we're gonna start out. Then we'll go five, five on the first two strings. So, so far we have coming down on the second string, we'll now play eight, pull off to five. Now here's the key, one of the keys to it. We're going to go to the third string, play the seventh, and go back up to the second string and play the fifth. Okay, and then we're going to play on the fifth. On the fifth, we're going to play, on the third string, we're going to play five, hammer six, and we're going to play the seventh, then on the fourth string, okay, which is the root of the A. All right, so, so far we've got. Now the last part is just a little souped up version of what we're talking about before, going to the octave, or hitting that E on the E chord, and then going down an octave and hitting another E. But we're going to proceed it with this. Right? So we'll play, again, that same thing that we've been doing uh, on the third string or on the G string. We'll hammer from five to six. Then we'll play the E on the B string there at the fifth fret and drop a whole octave and play on the fifth fret the E. And you'll hear Clapton do that in a lot of his blues turnarounds in that time period. That sort of thing, right? So again, here's the whole lick. All 
I guess the main thing that you want to do is to hit those notes kind of hard and anytime you can play a nice downstroke and give it some nice vibrato if you can. So on that note it gets some nice vibrato and on that last note it gets some nice vibrato. Those are the basic tips I've got on that. Now there are plenty of variants on that that you can try. They sound great. Uh, you can try sort of Angus Young sort of things. That kind of thing sounds great. So play around with that one, learn the basic lick first, and then play the variants. All right, let's get to the intro itself, which is also pretty cool. So <clears throat> I always wondered about this when I was a young youngin trying to play this, and it never really sounded right. Maybe it still doesn't for me, but I think I can make it sound a little bit better now. And it's mainly with this pull-off, realizing that it was all in open position. I was trying to play it in different positions. It just did. That sounds wrong. It just wasn't working. So when you play it in open position, all of a sudden things start to work. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to play an open A, and then we're going to play the A on the third string, and we'll, we'll play it and, ha and pull it off and then play it back on, like so. I guess in the beginning we're going to pick things. Those are all picked, and then you'll pull off the next one. And then hammer back on and pull it off again. You're not picking those last pieces. That's how it's got to be. Like that. Then of course getting back, we'll play this note on the fifth string, third, and pull that off to an open A. So we're going to do that essentially four times. Now there is a tiny wrinkle in that the third and fourth times Clapton plays a chord first. He plays on the third and the second string. He plays that second, um, I think that's what he's doing anyway. He plays the second fret. So first two are just normal. And then we're playing the chords. It's kind of subtle, all right? Now we're going to the D chord. All right, so that's pretty straightforward. Just form a D7 chord right here, which is third string uh, second, second string first, and first string second, right? That's our D7 chord. And we're pulling, remember, we're pulling off on that third string. We'll play two Ds on the fourth string. Then we'll play two Cs on the second string on the first fret. And then we'll play third and first. Then we'll play the uh, second string first down to that pulled off thing note again. And we'll go back, all right? Second time Clapton actually plays it a little bit differently. If you want to play it exact, it's, it's a little more work. But if you want to just play the same thing, it sounds great. It doesn't really matter all that much what you do on that D chord, all right? Second time he plays. So that's basically just top to the third string. Right? So there's two of those, right? Okay, then we're going to go back to our... Now, here's the, the bottom one. Now, this is, or this is where it goes to the E. Here's where I think the timing is a little bit weird, and I would advise you to just play this. Just two 
of those. And then we're going to go. So that's a cool lick. Um, we're going to start on the fifth string, third fret, and slide all the way up to the seventh. And you kind of hesitate and then slide the whole thing up quickly. Minor pentatonic run. Right, so that's just on the fourth string. Now a little pull off. And what's cool about that one is there's a little bit of a hesitation. He plays that. He doesn't play. He plays. Very neat. So here's that whole piece on the E that's going to be played. Now we're just going to go back into our lick. And that's that. Okay, gang, well, there we go. One of the great licks of all time, for sure. Eric Clapton's famous turnaround mm -hmm. lick from Crossroads. It's a great one. I hope you enjoyed learning this one, if you didn't already know it. And I certainly enjoyed playing it and teaching it. So, anyway, hope you did. We'll see you on down the road.